Water flows steadily through this porous cylindrical filter. Water enters the filter as feed on the left hand side. Some of the water flows radially outward through the pores in the filter and the rest of the water exits the filter as retentate. We know the volumetric flow rate of the feed is 20 liters per second and we know the length and the diameter of the filter 0.95 meters and 60 millimeters. We also know the radial speed of the fluid leaving the filter and this speed is a function of z and at the entrance of the filter z is equal to zero and in that region vr is equal to v naught which is equal to four centimeters per second. At the exit of the filter z is equal to l and we find that at that region vr is equal to zero. So when we graph the velocity of the fluid leaving the filter, it's a uh, parabolic in nature, uh, starting out at V0 and decaying to zero by the exit of the filter. If we were to graph the velocity of the permeate from the side view, we would see permeate flowing upward and downward. It's also flowing radially outward, again with the highest value at the entrance of the filter and the, vo the value decaying to zero towards the exit of the filter. So from a side view, a crude graph of the permeate velocity would look something like this. We know the volumetric flow rate of the feed is equal to 20 liters per second. The volumetric flow rate of the retentate has to be smaller than the volumetric flow rate of the feed, and this is because some of the water leaves as permeate. We'll find by way of conservation of of mass that the volumetric flow rate of the feed has got to be equal to the volumetric flow rate of the permeate plus the volumetric flow rate of the retentate. We want to find the volumetric flow rate of the permeate, the retentate, and then the percentage of feed which leaves as the permeate. So it'll look something like Q R divided by QF. To solve this problem, let's work with the conservation of mass equation. To work with this equation, we first have to define the control volume and the control surface. For this problem, let's define the control surface as being the outer face of the filter. When we look at it on its own, the control surface is just going to be a cylinder. So the control surface is the surface of the cylinder, and the control volume is the volume within the cylinder. We also need to define outward facing unit normals. On this side of the control surface, the outward facing unit normals point in this direction. On the right hand side, the outward facing unit normals point in this direction. And finally, on the third surface, the outward facing unit normals point radially outward from any location of our control surface. It's also important to consider the velocity vectors at all locations. So here at this location, the velocity vectors are entering the control surface. On the right, the velocity vector are leaving the control surface. And then finally, the velocity vectors are also leaving the third surface of the cylinder as permeate. Let's break up the control surface into three individual surfaces. So we'll call the entrance here surface one, we'll call the exit surface two, and we'll call the permeate surface three. So we're going to evaluate v1 dot n1 at the entrance, we'll evaluate v2 dot n2 at the exit, and we'll evaluate v3 dot n3 for the permeate. The first question I have for you is the sign of the dot product v1 dot n1. We're going to evaluate that at surface 1. Is it positive, is it zero, or is it negative? So v1 dot n1 is a negative quantity. If we examine this, the velocity vector at the entrance, v1, is opposite to the unit normal. So we'll find that v1, when we dot that with the unit normal n1 at the entrance, we'll find that v1 dot n1 is equal to a negative quantity, and that's going to be equal to the negative magnitude of v1. And for simplicity, I'll drop the magnitude, and I'll just call that v1. The second question I have for you is in regards to the dot product v2 dot n2, which we'll evaluate at surface 2. Is it positive, 0, or negative? Well, the dot product v2 dot n2 is positive, so the outward facing unit normal n2 points in that direction, and it points in the same direction as v2. Because they point in the same direction, v2 dot n2 is equal to the positive magnitude of v2. And because v3 and the outward facing unit normal n3 are also in the same direction, we'll find that v3 dot n3 is equal to positive the magnitude of velocity at 3. And this is where calling VR. 
Let's go back and look at our mass balance equation. Instead of letting these two terms sum to zero, it might be easier to interpret the equation in this form. The left side of this equation represents the net rate at which mass accumulates within the control volume. The integral on the right hand side is the net rate at which mass leaves the control volume. And we switch that to being the net rate at which mass enters the control volume by using the negative sign. The reason this integral represents the net rate at which fluid leaves is by way of the dot product. Recall that V dot N is positive if the fluid is leaving the control volume, and it's negative where the fluid is entering the control volume. Well, in this problem, water is flowing steadily throughout the control volume. This means that the term on the left-hand side, the time rate of change, has to be equal to zero. And what this means is that at any given point in time, there's a certain amount of water within the filter itself. The volume of water within the filter itself doesn't change over time. And because the density of water is uniform, uniform throughout the control volume, rho is just a constant, and we can pull that out of the integral. And then dividing both sides by rho, we find that it drops out of the expression. Let's split that surface integral into three parts, surface 1, surface 2, and surface 3, corresponding to the feed, the retentate, and the permeate. Recall that v1.n1 is just equal to negative v1, and because it's uniform over area 1, it can come out of the integral, and we'll find when we evaluate that integral, the area at the entrance is just pi over 4 times the diameter squared. And we'll find something similar for the retentate, whereas now the fluid is leaving, so we have a positive v2 multiplied by pi over 4 d squared. The only thing we have to address now is the volumetric flow rate leaving the permeate. So let's take that area integral, we're going to split it up, we're going to integrate from 0 to L, and then 0 to 2 pi for theta. And v3 dot n3, recall, is just equal to vr. So writing this out, we've got vr r, don't forget, we've got r d theta multiplied by dz. Here r is a constant, it's just the radius of the filter itself. So when we evaluate that integral, we're left with 2 pi r out front, and that's just equal to pi times the diameter of the filter, which we know. And now we're left with evaluating the integral of vr with respect to z from z running from 0 to l. So when we plug in vr, we're evaluating this integral, we find that it evaluates to 2 thirds pi times the diameter times length times v naught. So this is what we're left with to evaluate. Well, the first term, the velocity multiplied by the area of the inlet, is just equal to the volumetric flow rate of the feed, which we know. The second term is the volumetric flow rate of the retentate, which we're trying to find. And the third term represents the volumetric flow rate of the permeate, which we can now calculate. And being careful with units, we find that that is equal to 4.8 liters per second. The volumetric flow rate of the retentate, then, is equal to the volumetric flow rate of the feed minus the volumetric flow rate of the permeate, and we find, and we find that that quantity is equal to 15.2 liters per second. Finally, the percentage of the feed leaving as permeate is a ratio of 4.8 liters per second divided by 20 liters per second, and that ratio then is equal to 24 percent.